This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform you can use to build your online identity and business. What is going on, everybody? My name is John Solo, and this is Messed Up Origins, the show where I break down the often horrifying original versions of your favorite childhood stories. I hope you're ready for this episode because it's what experts in the field of folklore call a doozy. Today's stories are all variations of the 12 dancing princesses, and they are all bizarre. They feature some evil princesses pulling Bill Cosby's, other princesses being turned into sheep, and a visit to a quaint little town called Hell. This is almost our 80th episode of Messed Up Origins, and it's still never failed to amaze me what people thought of as children's stories back then. It's almost as crazy as somebody watching Jake Paul or Lele Ponza's content and saying that's safe for kids. Like honestly though, if you're planning on watching this episode with your kid, you might want to consider locking them in the cupboard under the stairs until it's over because these tales get pretty intense. However, before we dive into what may be the strangest selection of stories to date, I gotta give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Squarespace. At this point, everyone knows what Squarespace is. They're an incredibly easy to use all-in-one platform where you can build a website for basically any purpose you can think of. Whether you're trying to sell some merchandise, show off your art, or build a virtual gallery full of pictures of Danny DeVito, and who could blame you for wanting to do that? They make the process super simple. They have an entire selection of starter templates for you to choose from that they're always adding to, as well as a wide variety of fonts and colors that you can change at will so your site ends up looking exactly how you picture it in your head. You can buy domains through them at reasonable prices, or even import ones you already own for free. See, I know literally nothing about coding, so I've been very open about sharing my love for Squarespace and how helpful they were when I built MessedUpOrigins.com. If it weren't for their intuitive user interface and their customer support team ready and waiting on the rare occasion I had a question, my site would probably be more of a joke than SpaceJam.com. If you want to follow in my footsteps and try out Squarespace yourself, just follow my link in the description or go to Squarespace.com slash John Solo to start your free trial and use coupon code John Solo to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, a fantastic ad read that I know everybody watched and no one skipped over. Right? Anyway, now that that's out of the way, it's time for us to get started. As always, make sure you drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, enjoy. So the story I want to start with today features 12 dancing princesses, but it goes by another name, the shoes that were danced to pieces. This tale was written by our boys Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm and was included in the second volume of their first collection of fairy tales in 1815. They were told the tale by a family friend and were the first to ever publish a story of this tale type, ATU 306, The Danced Out Shoe. So that means their rendition is the oldest that we have record of. It starts by introducing the reader to a king who had 12 beautiful daughters, which is actually the most realistic part of the story in my opinion. When you have that many kids, there's just bound to be an ugly one. It's science. While all 12 of the king's daughters slept in the same bedroom, and every night he would lock them in from the outside. The strange thing, besides them all sleeping in the same bedroom, is when he'd greet them in the morning, their shoes would all be torn to shreds. Or I'm sorry, the story says they were danced to pieces, so I should probably phrase it that way. Don't ask me how he knew they were torn up from specifically dancing, though. That's just something we've got to accept. The princesses all denied that they were up all night dancing and ruining their shoes, so the king made an announcement that anyone who helped him solve this mystery would get one of his daughters hands in marriage and his throne when he died. However, if somebody volunteered and couldn't figure it out within three days, they would be executed. I think we can all agree that's a pretty harsh punishment to give someone who's trying to help you, but I guess he was trying to motivate them? Apparently back then they hadn't heard of positive reinforcement. Well, despite the risk, there were many fine young men who volunteered, but their investigations all went down the same way. At night, the man would post up right outside the girl's bedroom door to make sure none of them left, but inevitably he'd start to get tired and fall asleep, and when he woke up the next day, Day, their shoes would all have holes. Then at the end of the three days when the volunteer still hadn't figured it out, his head would be cut off. Yummy. Now we cut away to a former soldier who's walking into the king's city when he's stopped by a mysterious old woman who gives him some valuable advice. That if he's trying to solve the mystery of the torn up shoes to not drink the glass of wine he's offered by the princess because it's laced with a sleeping potion. Like I said, taking a page out of old Dr. Huxtable's book. Then the old lady hands him an invisibility cloak so he can observe the girls without them knowing because there's no way he can abuse that power, and the soldier heads to the castle. Once he arrives, he volunteers to help with the investigation. The king says okay, and before you know it, it's nighttime, and the soldier's being offered some drugged wine by the oldest sister. He accepts it, but little did she know, he had a sponge tied to his chin, so when he held up the glass, it absorbed all the wine. A few minutes later, he lays down, starts snoring loudly as if he's asleep, and the princesses all laugh at him for sealing his own fate. They don't give a flying fart about this dude losing his life because of them. When was the last time you heard a fairy tale where 
where the princesses were this evil. Believing that he's unconscious, they all proceed to get ready for their nightly disco, and then the oldest princess knocks on her bed, causing it to sink into the ground and reveal a secret passageway. The soldier follows the princesses into the passageway, which leads to a forest full of trees with silver, gold, and diamond leaves. And it's at this point the soldier almost blows his cover because he breaks off branches from the trees so he has proof of their shenanigans. At one point, he accidentally steps on the youngest princess's dress too, but when she calls out that something isn't right, the oldest one calls her a snow goose and tells her to shut up. Personally, I don't know what's so bad about being a snow goose, but apparently that princess looks down on them. Eventually, the girls arrive at a body of water where there's 12 boats waiting for them, each rowed by a handsome prince. The soldier sneakily joins the youngest princess on her boat, and the prince comments that rowing the boat is so much harder tonight. Now, on the other side of the water was a beautiful, brightly illuminated castle where joyful music was playing, and lo and behold, each prince proceeded to dance with his princess until three in the morning when their shoes had been torn to shreds. Now that the girls were essentially shoeless, they had to go back home, so the soldier rode with them across the lake, then raced ahead so he could get back to his bed and fake being asleep before they got there. And this next bit may surprise you, but the soldier actually didn't report his findings to the king right away. He decided to wait because he wanted to see the beautiful sight again. He followed the girls to the castle for the next two nights, and before his final journey back, he snatched a goblet they were drinking wine out of as evidence. On the last morning, the soldier stood before the king with the 12 princesses behind him and told them they were sneaking to an underground castle to dance with 12 princes. Naturally, this intrigued the king, so the soldier told him the whole story and showed him the broken branches and goblet as proof. The princesses had no choice but to confess what they were up to, and the soldier was given his prize. He took the oldest sister as his bride because in his own words, he was not a young man anymore, and they were married the same day. Then, as punishment for their transgressions, the princes had as many days added to their curse as they had spent nights dancing with the princesses. Full disclosure, the story never reveals what the prince's curse actually was. I'm assuming it's something related to being trapped in that underground castle, but I have no idea how the princesses dancing with them was supposed to help. Regardless, that was the story of the shoes that were danced to pieces, and I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, it's the oldest version of the story that we have written record of, but there are other versions. For example, Andrew Lang's 12 Dancing Princesses from 1857. This seems to be the version that most people are familiar with. It's very similar to the Grimm Brothers, but it has a little more detail, and the more mature aspects are toned down. This one follows a farmhand who has a dream of marrying a princess someday, and he gets a job working as a gardener on the castle grounds to up his chances. He hears about a mystery surrounding the princesses and how every night their shoes end up with holes in them, so he takes it upon himself to try and crack the case. He hides under one of their beds to see what they're up to at night, a risky move for sure, and the rest plays out very similar to the Grimm's with him following them to an underground castle and watching them dance in the moonlight. Some key differences in Andrew Lang's version, though, is there's no roofies involved, and the suitors who came before the farmhand weren't killed when they couldn't figure out what was going on. They just mysteriously disappeared. As we all know, do or die circumstances were pretty common in old fairy tales, but editors in the Victorian era didn't appreciate them, hence the change. Now, normally I'd be pretty annoyed about a censorship like that, but for once, I can at least appreciate their reasoning. Because the Victorian era was a time when self-help was encouraged, critics despised the idea that those who had strove and failed should be worse off than those who had never striven. As a result, the editors didn't want to punish the blokes who had tried to solve the mystery but failed because at least they tried. Oh, and one last fact about Lang's version I think you would appreciate, it contains a princess in the P reference. When the narrator is describing what the farmhand heard about the princesses, he says, they were so very sensitive and of such truly royal blood that they would have felt at once the presence of a P in their beds even if the mattresses had been laid over it. Apparently, Lang was a fan of Hans Christian Andersen's work. Anyway, as messed up as this story was, I made some bold promises back in this episode's intro and I plan to keep them. So let's move on to our next fairy tale, which makes the Grimm Brothers version look like it was written by the Wiggles. So this next story, titled The Three Girls, might be both the strangest and most messed up story that we cover today. Now that may be because it was found in a book called Gypsy Folk Tales, but who's to say for sure? In terms of the overall plot, it's very similar to the past few stories we covered. A king, who in this version has three daughters, has no idea how their shoes are getting ruined every night, so he orders his assistant Jankos to follow them. But Jankos bites off more than he can chew. While spying on the three girls, he finds out that they're being visited nightly by three devils who take them through a trap door that leads them down to hell where they proceed to dance the night away. Apparently, these broads never learned it's a bad idea to dance with the devil. What makes this even more bizarre is they aren't just dancing, though. They're dancing on beds of knives, and this is how their shoes get destroyed so fast. Then, because we're just getting started on the weirdness, the devils proceed to lay the two oldest girls on a bed one at a time, and... 
go dancing in the sheets, if you know what I mean. This is while Jankos was hiding under the bed, by the way. I can't forget that detail. The next day, Jankos reported his findings to the king, and in response, the king pulled out his rifle and shot his two oldest daughters dead, and then cut them open so the devils in their bellies would scatter. All I can say is, it's a good thing Jankos wasn't lying. The story isn't over yet, though. The king had his daughters buried and their graves guarded by soldiers, but every night, the soldiers would be ripped apart by the princess's spirits. This had gone on for so long that the only people left to guard the graves were a new recruit in Jankos. They were terrified for their lives, but lucky for them, a wise old man came up to them before nightfall and said that when the coffins open up and the girl's spirits come out, for Jankos and the soldier to jump in the coffin themselves and stay there no matter what. To make a long story short, they did exactly that, rendering the spirits' attacks on them useless, and by morning, the king's daughters were not just alive, but more beautiful than ever. The king was so ecstatic when they all returned to the castle that he let Jankos marry one daughter, the soldier marry the other, and everyone lived happily ever after. Those gypsies, man, they write some good stories. So this next tale, Kate Crackernuts, is from the British Isle and is another collected by Andrew Lang. It's a mesh of the ATU-306 tail type as well as ATU-711, the beautiful and the ugly twin. You'll see why it fits there in just a minute. This one is basically the 12 dancing princesses with the genders reverse and the evil stepmom thrown in the mix. There's a king who has a daughter named Anne and his new wife, the queen, has a daughter named Kate. The queen is jealous of Anne's famous good looks, but Kate loves her new sister. Well, to punish the girl for being so goddamn beautiful, the queen puts a curse on Anne so that her beautiful face is replaced by a sheep's head and Kate, not knowing it's her own mother's fault, vows to find the cure. She wraps a cloth around Anne's head, they leave home, and they soon find a castle that's inhabited by a king and his two sons, one of whom has come down with a strange illness that leaves him bedridden. And what's even stranger is that anyone who agrees to watch the sun overnight just disappears without a trace. But this doesn't scare Kate, who volunteers to be the night watcher in exchange for shelter for her and her sick sister. Now fast forward to the middle of the night when the prince rises up like the Manchurian candidate, gets stressed, and rides his horse off into the forest, all while looking like he's sleepwalking. Kate follows him on her own horse for not just one, but for three nights in a row, and each time he leads her through a mysterious forest to a magnificent dance that's held under a green hill. Apparently homeboys hanging out with some hobbits. Here's the thing, the forest the prince leads her through is not just any forest. It's inhabited by fairies and they happen to have exactly what Kate needs to solve all of her problems. On her second night following the prince, she steals a magic wand from a baby fairy and cures her sister's sheep head with it. And on the second night, she steals a bird from that same baby fairy and cures the cursed prince by cooking it and feeding it to him. In the end, they all return to the castle. Kate marries the prince and marries his brother and they all live happily ever after. I'll admit, I didn't do that story the justice it deserves, but we'll be talking about it again in the future as a featured fable, so keep your eyes peeled for that. As for this episode though, that was the messed up origins of the 12 dancing princesses and a few other stories that it may have evolved into. I hope you enjoyed it and learned yourself a little something in the process. If that was the case, I would really appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing to have more content just like this delivered to your sub box on a regular basis and sharing this video with anyone you know who likes this story. As always, the links to my social medias are also down below, so just give those a follow if you want to stay updated on Messed Up Origins news, suggest a topic, or just say hello. I also want to give a special thank you to those who saw my post on Instagram about needing more art for this video and took it upon themselves to whip up some beautiful drawings at the very last minute. The Solo Fam is lucky to have you guys, and I appreciate your help with this one. Well, that about does it for this episode, so I'll be seeing you guys next week with even more Messed Up Origins. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first. Thank you.